Hi, I'm Matthias Beck. I'm one of the authors of Computing the Continuous Discreetly. And in this video, we'll finish chapter 10 by discussing decompositions of H star polynomials. Here's the result that I'm after. You give me an integral polytope. And for the time being, I will assume that it contains an interior lattice point. Then we have a decomposition of the H star polynomial, the numerator of the Erhard series, as a sum of two polyndromic polynomials. You should convince yourself that this statement by itself is nothing special. You can take any polynomial and write it as such a sum two polynomials, both polyndromic. And in fact, this decomposition is unique. What makes this result special is that the polynomials in this decomposition have non-negative coefficients. You might remember in chapter three, we proved that the H star polynomial always has non-negative coefficients. This was theorem 3.12. And so you can think of this theorem 10.9 as a refinement, because not only does H star have non-negative coefficients, but the polynomials A and B in this decomposition, this unique decomposition, have non-negative coefficients. That's a stronger statement than saying H star has non-negative coefficients. And as you imagine, this has a consequence that we can express entirely in terms of the H star coefficients. So this is sort of an easy corollary. So you can translate the fact that A and B have non-negative coefficients into some linear inequalities among the H star coefficients. And this is the corollary 10.8 that you see here. So what's our plan? So I claim that this formula here follows from the betke mcmullen theorem that we discussed in the previous video. The ingredients of the betke mcmullen theorem were uh, h-polynomials of links. And these box polynomials. And we already said that these box polynomials have non-negative coefficients and are polyndromic. So what we'll do now is we'll establish a triangulation of P for which the H polynomials of all the links are again polyndromic and non-negative. And then the theorem that's on this page and a corollary 10.7 that you see here follow rather immediately. So here's a reminder. This is the betke mcmullen theorem from the previous video. We're fixing a triangulation, and then the H star polynomial can be written as a sum over the simplices in this triangulation. And the summons involve the H polynomials of the links and the box polynomials. And our plan now is to start with a boundary triangulation. In fact, one that is regular. So on the right, in the top picture, you see sort of a schematic of this. And then we use the fact that we have an interior lattice point to compute a triangulation coming from this boundary triangulation. So what I'll do is I'll take each simplex in my boundary triangulation and take the convex hull together with this interior point. This is called coning over a triangulation. This effect that this has is that the triangulation of the interior, if you want, of the polytope, entirely corresponding to the triangulation of the boundary. For each simplex in the boundary, maybe something like this, there is a unique simplex 
one dimension higher that intersects the interior of the polytope. You can even think of the interior lattice point that after all is part of our triangulation as corresponding to the empty simplex in our boundary triangulation. Anyway, what this means is that from my boundary triangulation I get this sort of full triangulation T0 And I used the betke mcmullen theorem for this triangulation T0. I get a decomposition of the A-star polynomial of the polytope. just as in Betkeling and Wallen. But now what happens is that the A polynomial of the link of one of my simplices in the boundary remains invariant if I instead take the convex hull of the simplex with my interior point. So what this means is that I can really write this as a sum over the simplices in the boundary and I quote unquote only have to compute the H star polynomials of the links of simplices in the boundary and then my box polynomials well I need one for uh, delta and for the convex hull of um, delta with this interior point. And if you now unravel this, this gives you the A, B decomposition from the previous slide. What we now need to remark is that for a simplex coming from a boundary triangulation, I claim that the H polynomial of a link of the simplex is non-negative and palindromic. So it's very important that we wrote this last line as just a sum over a boundary triangulation. This is sort of a generalization of uh, the Dane Somerville equations for a boundary triangulation. Really what we're saying is not only does that work for the triangulation, but also for the links in the triangulation. Anyway, so here is a palindromic polynomial with non-negative coefficients. And we already said that these box polynomials are palindromic polynomials with non-negative coefficients. And so if you unravel this now, and write this as a sum first over the H polynomials times the box polynomials of delta and then a sum over the H polynomials of the links times the box polynomials of the interior simplices, you get theorem 10.5 and corollary 10.7. Let me spend a few minutes giving you an idea of what one can do if there is no such interior lattice point. And this is this generalization here by Alan Stapleton. If you have an integral polytope and I compute the H star polynomial, it has some degree s. If I have an interior lattice point, this degree will be equal to d, the dimension of p. But this theorem is now in the general case. And you can see what changes. If I have a smaller degree s, I have an AB decomposition not of the H star polynomial, but 
I need to multiply the h star polynomial by this finite geometric series. You can see if s is equal to d, this geometric series up front is trivial. At any rate, now we get this decomposition into palindromic polynomials, and again, what's important is that they have non-negative coefficients. And you can unravel this in the same way as the theorem that we started our video with and get linear inequality among the h star coefficients. They're going to look a little different from what you see here, but the philosophy is the same. So let me just give you a remark of how one proves this theorem over here. And that is, we'll take the picture of a cone over a polytope. Yeah, so if you remember, this was one of our favorite things. If you start with a polytope P over here, we form the cone over it. And of course, a triangulation of P gives you a triangulation of the cone and vice versa. But the point is, what I don't have now is I don't have this sort of interior lattice point in P, but I will have an interior lattice point at some height larger than one. You know, for the cone over P, I think of P as living at height one in sort of my additional dimension. And so while I might not have an interior lattice point at height one, I have some lattice point at some height. And in fact, you can realize that this height has something to do with the degree of the H star polynomial. At any rate, what I'll do now is I don't triangulate P using an interior lattice point, but I triangulate my cone using this interior lattice point at some height larger than one. And if you now follow the philosophy of how we computed our box polynomials, this finite geometric series that you see in Stapleton's theorem will appear naturally and it'll appear exactly from this interior lattice point. And you can sort of see the higher I have to go to find this interior lattice point, the larger this finite geometric series has to be in this theorem.